In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my top five pro tips for improving your aim. These tips are crucial to help you develop your aiming skills so you can climb those ranks faster. Some of you might already know these tips, but most of you here watching this video right now might not. So let me know if these tips help you and let me know what I might have missed. And if you're new to the channel or find yourself here more often, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a ton and it lets you know when I post videos like these. And if you go on to enjoy this video, then go ahead and leave a like and share this video. So that way I am able to help more newbies in need. And without further ado, here are my top five pro aiming tips. What's up everyone, it's your boy Stump. And the number one tip that I could give everyone that is the most important tip, and that is to find your perfect sensitivity. And now some of you watching this are probably using your favorite pro player sensitivity, but I'm here to tell you, this is not how you get to play like them. The only way you can play like your favorite pro players is finding the right sensitivity that works for you and you alone. And to find your sensitivity, you need to find your aiming range. And now to find your aiming range, you're gonna need to find two parallel walls. Preferably, I like to use Bureau because it's got a lot of lines on it. You can line yourself up pretty well this way. And you can choose any map you want that has two parallel walls that are relatively close to each other. I'm actually gonna scoot in between here and this wall. All right, next, what you're going to do is you're going to take your aiming finger. In this case, it's gonna be my right thumb and you're gonna put it on the edge of your screen so if I can show you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb or whatever finger you use to aim and you're gonna put it on the inside edge of where you're gonna be aiming from, like this. Right, and then you're gonna move it towards the center so that way you can perform a 180 degree turn. And you wanna do this without moving your hand's position or overextending too much. And because I got big hands, I can go all the way to the middle of my screen without moving my hand at all. And when I say middle of the screen, I don't mean bring your finger all the way towards the middle of the screen, all right? That's stupid, don't do that. I'm just saying move it towards as far as you can to the middle of the screen so that way you can perform the 180 within this aiming range. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use this aiming range to do a full 180 degree turn. So if you overshoot like this, then you're gonna to wanna to turn your sensitivity down. But if you undershoot, you're gonna to wanna to turn your sensitivity up. And you're gonna keep doing this until you can get a full 180 degree rotation. And for you gyro players out there, you're gonna do the same thing, except you're gonna use 90 degree turns left and right. And you could go 90 degrees to the right, and if it's not within a comfortable position, which for me right now it's not, you would go ahead and turn it up. And you keep turning it up until you get it into a comfortable range for your wrists. All right, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. I have no idea how gyro works, so I'm just going off of what makes the most sense to me, and this is how I think gyro is supposed to work. So sue me if this doesn't. <laughs> And while we're still on the topic of settings, the second tip I could give you guys is to make sure you have the right settings enabled or disabled. And the two settings that I know that can be a problem for most players is aim acceleration and button input axis. Now what aim acceleration does is it takes the input from your finger and multiplies the sensitivity by the speed at which your aiming finger moves. So let's say we're at 100% aim acceleration sensitivity so the slower I move my finger, it goes fairly slow, but when I speed it up, it it goes, yeah, you get, <laughs> yeah, yeah, turn this off or set it to zero. The main reason you want to do this is because you want to have the most consistency within your aiming and having this aim acceleration turned on is gonna give you more inconsistency than you would want. All right, and the last setting that you need to worry about is the buttons block access input or the button input access. And what this does is it allows you to aim while holding down buttons. So I'm holding down on the jump button and I am aiming around at the same time. Crouch button, aiming around at the same time. Can't do this with the uh, chat or the waypoint or the shop. We can do it with the reload and you can also do it with the aim button. Now this could be particularly useful for smaller screens. However, I would urge caution using this, especially when using the fire button, because this can cause inaccuracies, especially when you're tap firing. So this setting can really depend on how you like to play the game. So try the setting out and see if it improves or impedes your gameplay. 
Tip number three is to keep your crosshair off the ground or around headshot level. Now, some of you might not realize it, but you're actually playing with your crosshair on the ground. So what aiming at the ground does is it makes you take longer to aim at your target. So let's say you got a guy who's like right there and you're holding uh, this angle right here and he pops out to like right here. If you're holding it right here, you're gonna have to pull your crosshair up and to your target. Whereas if it was right here, you just have to flick over. And everybody knows that the longest side of the triangle is the angled side or the hypotenuse. Sometimes the main problem I see with players who are aiming at the ground is mostly because their crosshair size is way too big so they can't see the other players at the other end. Some of you are still playing at 100 crosshair size. Holy crap. Another common problem is that you'll have players using dynamic crosshair. So when they have it on, you can, it's, it's hard to tell where you're aiming, especially when you're moving around like this. And so to fix this, it's really simple. You just gotta go into your settings, go to gameplay, turn off dynamic crosshair, and then turn your crosshair size down. I'd try at 50% first. So you got this crosshair size, and then keep shrinking it down to whatever makes you feel comfortable. All right, that's just for clearing things up for your visuals. If you want to find headshot level, turn to this planter right here where the plant itself is at headshot level. Now, sometimes you're going to have maps that don't have these planters, so you're going to need to find another point of reference for headshot level. And for this area on Bureau, headshot level is around the bottom of these paintings or the bottom trim of these paintings. So you just got to look around for where you can find your headshot levels at. All right, now tip number four is keeping your crosshair off of the corner. Now we already talked about how to keep your crosshair off the ground, but where do you put your crosshair when you're holding angles or peeking around a corner? Now most players will want to hold their crosshair right on the corner as they're peeking around this, so that way they have a nice tight angle. And the main problem with holding your crosshair on the corner while peeking around or holding angles is if they fast peek out, it's gonna take you longer to get to your target. And trust me, it doesn't seem like much, but every millisecond counts. So how should you hold angles or peek around angles? Well, instead of having your crosshair on the corner, I would suggest going about a player width distance away from the corner, so that way you have ample time to react to players who will be fast peeking out. And since the average reaction time is 250 milliseconds, this should give you enough time to react to the player fast peeking around the corner and shoot at them. And with this much distance between the corner and your crosshair, they're gonna be basically walking into your crosshair. But all of this will not be possible unless you do tip number five, which is to always warm up before you start playing. And warming up before you start playing can really mean the difference between having a good session or having a bad session. And I already have a video on how to make custom lobbies, especially practice lobbies. So go ahead and check that out and it'll help you set up this next part. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna spend about five to 10 minutes every day just going around and hitting headshots with your favorite weapons. So right here, headshot. Right here, headshot. Headshot. And if you miss, it's okay, just readjust. So warming up like this is a great way to get your hand muscles stretched out and get yourself into a comfortable position to start playing. And it doesn't matter if you die, you can just respawn and switch weapons if you want. I use the AK-47 because why not? And then once you finish warming up, you can then hop into a deathmatch to finish your missions, or you can go ahead and start queuing for ranked defuse. So now that you know these five pro aiming tips, it is now time to implement them into your gameplay. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all learned something today. And if you made it this far, then you might as well hit the subscribe button and leave a like to show your support. And don't forget to check out my shorts tab to see even more awesome tips, tricks, and gameplay. And as always, stay safe. Bye-bye. Awesome. I got all the footage I needed in one session. One 30-minute frickin' session!